Hello, this is Vern, and on today's episode, I'm going to share with you three specific ways men guilt women into sex so you don't have to fall for it. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. A complaint I get from women in the dating world very often is that they feel they have to have sex with guys earlier in the dating game, sometimes very early in the dating game, in order to have options, in order to have guys pursue them, in order to eventually be able to enter a relationship. And I'm here to say that that is not true. Here's what I mean. Some guys will want you to have sex with them early or they won't continue. My take to you is you don't have to date those guys. You don't have to have sex earlier than you're ready for in order to have a guy be interested in you or pursue you. I'm gonna share with you something that I'd love for you to consider, which is there's at least three different aspects of sex. There's gonna be a physical aspect of, uh, aspect of sex, which is what you will have if you have sex early on with someone that you don't know, who's pressuring you or maybe guilting you into having sex. There's gonna be the emotional aspect of having sex, which is beyond just the feelings that you're having. I'm talking about a little bit more of that in a second. And then there's a spiritual component of having sex with someone. Now, my hope is that you go for all three when you have sex. Uh, the emotional aspect of sex means there's depth, there's an element of friendship, there's an element of trust, there's respect, there's safety, there's compatibility, all the things that make sex feel more lasting, more intense, less feeble, less just one time, less, to one, less of a one night stand are the things that in, are involved in the emotional aspect of sex. The spiritual aspect of sex is going to be where you are seeking a partner and that partner is seeking you and you're able to create a better experience for the world and for both of your lives through the intimate interaction and the vulnerable expression of both of yourselves. Now, that is impossible to do in the context of not knowing someone and not understanding them, not having any type of friendship with them. So when I ask you to have a boundary with men who want to have sex early on with you is for two main reasons. One is because the likelihood that you could get attached to that human being in a mix of emotions and hormones and chemical brain explosions of sorts when you have sex and it's a good connection sex wise, but it's not a good connection emotionally or compatibility wise, it's high, meaning you can get attached to the wrong guy. And second reason is you will lose objectivity. You might stop seeing big red giant flags that would have made you not go forward with a man, but because you're so enthused, you will throw those aside in order to continue getting that storm of emotions in your brain and your heart. So the longer you wait, as you get to know the guy, the more objective you will be and the less likely you'll be attached to an a-hole. <laughs> Let's put it clearly and directly. So here's the first argument guys will start using when they want to guilt you into having sex. They're gonna say something along the lines of, well, sex is such an important part of a relationship, so what if we're not compatible? Let's just get that out of the way and make sure that we're compatible so that we can continue dating. That's equivalent to you going maybe some, to a house, uh, I don't know, there's a $5 million mansion that's being sold and claiming that you need to have a party inside the house to find out if you wanna buy it, right? Well, here's the thing. First, let's find out if you have $5 million to buy the house and then let's find out if you want to enjoy a party before you decide to buy it. Does that make sense? Here's how this translates to you. There's other elements that are far more important at the beginning of getting to know someone without which finding out if you're sexually compatible is not even relevant. Is it a risk to not find out if you're sexually compatible? It is a risk, but it's a lower risk than getting attached to a dude who's destroying your emotions and your life because you might be not compatible with him sexually. So first steps first, you walk before you run and you run before you go into an ultra marathon, right? So first step is you want to find out if you're compatible, if there's friendship, if, if you guys can 
see eye to eye on many subjects and then you take the next risk which is having sex. Now my recommendation is that you do that under the construct of a relationship, meaning exclusive relationship with a dude. He's not dating anyone else and he's not making love with anyone else and neither are you. At that level, that's when you can risk it. I don't recommend waiting until marriage. Why? Because then you might be stuck with someone for many, many years that isn't sexually compatible with you. So you, you, I do think it's important to figure out if that compatibility takes place, but not early on, as many guys suggest. Second argument that guys will share with you in, in, in the hopes of getting you to open up your heart and take off your clothes and have sex with them earlier on is it's been X number of dates. Number of dates don't determine if you should have sex with someone. They really don't. If you have gone on three dates, four dates, five, whatever number of dates with a guy and you don't know him well and he's not your boyfriend, I mean, I don't care how many, how many dates you've gone into. The guy is building something that's going to stand the test of time. So imagine this argument. Here's a guy who's in theory saying, I'm looking for commitment, compatibility, lifelong partnership, marriage, potentially children. And he's not, waiting to, he's not willing to wait a few months <laughs> before he has sex with you. He's promising a lifelong thing at some point, but isn't willing to at least delay gratification for a few months so you can first find out if you're compatible in other areas that are more fundamental and foundational to a relationship. Ah, that's, it's a bad argument. And the third argument guys use is guilting you into feeling less than. You're not free enough. You're not self-expressed enough. You're not modern enough. You're not whatever enough. Uh, you're not sovereign to make your own choices. You're stuck in the past. You're following your mom's advice. You're following the church doctrine. This is nothing to do with church or anything else. This is something to do with you are at a greater vulnerable risk when you have sex with a guy than he is. Starting from the standpoint that you could get pregnant, just that one will set you back a little bit. But there's other reasons why you as a highly emotional being might get slightly more attached at the beginning than the guy will. So you want to wait a little bit longer for that. And if a guy is saying that you're not free self-expressed enough, maybe he's not understanding enough. Maybe he's not patient enough. Maybe he's not conscious enough. Maybe he's not selfless enough. How about that? Those are possibilities as well. Now, what do you do with this information? First, I hope you understand that you don't have to do anything you're not comfortable with for, to get an end result. You can date and have a lifelong relationship with someone that, where you didn't have sex before you were ready for. Second is that I want you to set a boundary with kindness and firmness. So just kindness means that you might be a little soft on it. Just firmness might be you might go overboard. Combination of both kindness and firmness. How much kindness can you express uh, as much as he will get the job done? So you will share with a guy that you are not ready for that and that what your boundary is, what your standard is, that you want exclusivity before that happens. Now, if the guy continues pushing you, you will stay in one more time with more firmness. If the guy still pushes you, then you, you want to walk away. There's going to be guys who are going to be understanding of your boundary and they will not like it, but they will understand it and respect it. That's one thing. You're not looking for a guy who says, yes, thank you for this boundary. I was hoping you share this. I'm so excited that I have to wait a few months before. No, I mean, he's not going to say that. So you're not going for that, but you're going for a guy who says, I want it sooner, but I understand and I respect it. That's a guy that you can test things with. That's a guy that eventually, if he becomes your boyfriend, you can have sex with. But the guy who's not willing to wait, who continues shaming you or guilting you, that's a guy you need to walk away from. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful. And if it is, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. If you want to learn more about how to enter the kind of relationship you want, on the first link on the description of this video, you'll find a way where you click on the link, enter your name and email, and start watching a free class that I created for you right away. If you like this video, click like, a thumbs up, write a comment, tell me, let me know what you learned. And last but not least, if you feel you want much more than video help to get where you want to go, you understand that this is a process that needs nuance and hand-holding and sometimes accountability. There's a second link on the description of the video that will allow you to apply to work with me where we can find out if we can be a great fit 
to work together. Thank you so much for connecting with me. As always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life. <laughs>